Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health, everyone. We are on um, part two, our second episode of our polycystic kidney disease series. Um, so a question for you, Dr. Hashmi, today is how do you slow down polycystic kidney disease? Yeah, so guys, if you haven't watched the first video, please make sure you go back because we define what polycystic kidney disease is and you really need that foundation. Now we're going to jump right into what are the treatment options available? So some of the basics are that a lot of things around blood pressure have changed. We know that if somebody is about 18 to 50 years old and they have normal kidney function, which means a GFR greater than 60, we are very aggressive with their blood pressure, meaning we keep their blood pressure less than 110 over 75. That is a very aggressive target. And for everyone else, the goal is to be less than 130 over 80. So keep in mind, blood pressure is really important to control. Salt is really important to control. So the daily sodium intake should be restricted to less than two grams. Now, if you watched our episodes before, we've always talked about two, 2.3, depending on the study we cited, but that's still the same thing here. It's even stricter to stay less than two. With water, we're going to have a whole episode on water, but really, we want you to drink more than three liters per day going on. And one of the myths that's important to note is in the past, people used to say, don't take caffeine or caffeinated products because it may make the cyst worse. That data came from animal studies, but looking at human studies, there is no evidence of that. So in animal studies, there was some thought that basically cutting back on caffeine would restrict the cyst from getting larger, but that does not hold true. And then one of the only treatments that we have is a medication called Tolvaptan. Now, the reason people don't use Tolvaptan is one, the side effects are quite severe, and two, it ends up being very expensive. So the mechanism of Tolvaptan is very simple, and you should understand it just on a broad level, which is there is uh, inside our kidneys, there are these receptors called V2 receptors, and vasopressin goes and activates these V2 receptors, and as a result, you get a cascade reaction that leads to cyst formation. So what does Tolvaptan do? It blocks the V2 receptor. That's it. That's all you literally have to know. As a side effect of that, what ends up happening when you block the V2 is you pee out like crazy. We're talking liters and liters of water a day going on. Now, let's get into some alternative treatment options that you may not have heard about. So one of the things we know about cysts, and this is important to understand, is cyst lining is dependent on glucose. So once again, this is one of the few times you're going to see me talk not about a plant-based diet, but about something very different. So because we know that cysts are dependent on glucose, the treatment is around getting rid of the glucose from the body. And what does that mean? There are actually three sort of big options you can do. One is the ketogenic diet. And if you watch some of our episodes, we've talked about how to make the ketogenic diet safer by using healthier fat options instead of meat-based options. So things like avocados, things like nuts, you know, all sorts of those things can be much better options than trying to think about bacon and all sorts of other things that are really high in saturated fat. So that's one option. Another option that is similar to ketogenic diet is intermittent fasting. Same concept. What are you doing by fasting? You're using up the glucose reserves in your body, and that's designed to slow down the cyst production going on. And then the last thing is, is ketone bodies, one type of ketone body is beta-hydroxybutyrate. Now there are salts and esters that you can take directly. They come in powders. They taste absolutely horrendous, so mix it with something going on. But you can take beta-hydroxybutyrate. You can do ketogenic diet, or you can do intermittent fasting. In animal models, all three have been shown to reduce or even uh, prevent the growth of cysts going on. And there you have it. Those are all of the main things. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, send us your questions. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.